Och så ska vi ta ut i grad två från Portugala har vi Sara Oliveira Duarten, Dagsgrans, tioårig Wallach, som ägs av Rita Rinnan. Hon har gjort 33, 32 internationella starter och fina framgångar i år i sommar och vardag. So first uh, of uh, grade two freestyle championship uh, competitors, we welcome uh, for Portugal, uh, Sara Oliveira Duarte, current competitor from uh, London 2012, is her uh, fifth uh, European uh, championships, also competed at the World Wrestling Games in Normandy in 2014. Welcome back then for our second competition here this, after, this morning in the Hedden Arena on this glorious sunny day. One gold medal decided, gone to Britain, Susanna Hex in a very close competition with uh, barely any percentage points separating the top three. Natasha Baker alongside me as we kick off this grade two competition uh, here this morning. And... First into the arena is Sarah Oliveira, Oliveira Duarte from Portugal. Um, competing here as an individual. She's riding her bay 10 year old gelding Dagster Plants and she's off and running. And of course, grade two, it means that from a para dressage perspective, starting to get amongst the least abled bodied of the competitors. One is the least able bodied, five the most able bodied. Absolutely, you're learning aren't you Rupert? Well I... done, I'm very proud of you over the last three days. This is looking really nice here from Sarah. This horse is really looking after her, she's doing a, a really fantastic test here. Some insecurity there in the contact. 33 year old grade two rider and was in the individual in London was ninth. Struggling there a little bit in the leg yield, in the walk. Just a bit of miscommunication. The horse you can see is a bit joggy. In its walk, it's not showing a clear rhythm. Wonderful world, Louis Armstrong. Well done. Even I knew that yeah, okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> From as I remember it first time round. And back into trot again. Serpentine now. You can see the horse is just not really through the contact enough taking the bridle that's where that irregularity comes from see her working really hard to try and get that walk a little bit more forward but she's doing a very good job here and she scored 60.205 um, struggled a bit on Monday to, to her result That's a much better quality of walk there. You can really see him, him striding out. I will survive, Gloria Gaynor. Correct. Top of the class. Thanks, Mum, for my early music education. I remember this one first time round too. <laughs> The beat of this music really suits this horse. Oh, that was a shame. I think she's running a little bit behind in her music there. See her working really hard to try and get the horse more forward. 
unfortunately caught is trailing quite a lot there in the leg yield. Getting better though as it goes on. You can see here in the grade two, although she's trying to kick, it's not massively effective. So that's where the disability comes in there. Losing some fluency. And a little bit late into her whole transition, but a good halt. She looks happy. Big pats to the horse. And a great start to the grade two competition here on day three, the final day. There's the Portuguese flag. She enjoyed that. The highlights here in Sarah's test. You can see the quality of the walk there is so much better than it was in the medium walk. This horse is so naturally round. It's so lovely to see Zara having such a great job and enjoying her time in the arena. As the horse has her vet checks there, making sure that she passes all the all the rules from the steward. That's Sarah Leach, the British judge there, who is judging from E. Been a few changes in the uh, judging box. Sarah Leach wasn't involved in the first one. She's at E. Marco Orsini is at uh, H from Germany. Mark Urban still on duty. Uh, he's gone to C. Kathy Amos Jakob from France is at M. And Bo Harmon from Sweden is at B. Those are your judges. There is Mark in the uh, C box. And I want to get a kind reminder to what all of those watching, please do retain your seats during the course of the He looks like he's challenging and John Robinson with a, a nice tie there as well. Just filling out the last bits on their test sheet. And having a giggle with his writer. It's like he's dancing or something, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. There's much discussion. He's got no Haribo in his uh, his judges box. Maybe he's jealous. John's gone away to go get some more he Haribos has. or whatever it is, some sweets. <laughs> So we await the score for our first grade two competitor. That's uh, the Portuguese rider, Sarah Olivier Vieira Duarte. And see what she's opened up with. Here it comes. And it is 62.033 is the opening gambit. An improvement on day one. Well, the six competitors in the grade two. We've got Nicole Dendolk, then it's uh, Celine Gurney, Jana Klivmaki from Finland, Stina Kastrup from Denmark, and Anna Rosenberg. Is it a battle straight between Nicole and Stina, or can you see who else? I think, uh, obviously you can't put anything past Papo. Oh, he's not on the list. He's not on the list. What's happened? Well, there you go. That's the list. Oh. Uh, can you get the tweeting? Let me let me try and find out what's happened here. That's a, a big turnaround. Obviously, we did have the vet check last night. Maybe something happened in, in there. Let me see if I can try and find out the backstage gossip, gossip as it were. 
but Nicole Dendolk, who's been part of the, uh, uh, had a good week herself uh, this week, um, when she picked up silver medal behind Pepo, uh, scoring 72.382. Uh, the winning score was 73.382. Uh, Stinner Hustrup in the bronze medal position. So uh, uh, here we go with our six riders. And Nicole just trotting around the arena. And her horse that you heard the ringside announcer mention, Wallace, a 14 year old gelding. on the side of this arena just still perfect day if you've just joined us if you just joined us the first gold medal went to Britain and Susanna Hext Britain without a representative in the grade two so a chance for another nation to grab the spoils here this horse is looking so good now oh. Lovely entry there from Nicole. Nicole, 37 year old. She was left a quadriplegic after a riding accident in 2007. And she is a committed para sportswoman, competing in hand cycling and indeed has competed in wheelchair tennis. Really good medium trot there across the diagonal. And into her three loop serpentine. Was this fit. just looks so fluent. Yes, yeah, it does. And she was fifth in the freestyle in Rio and was a double bronze medalist in the WEG 2014 Games in France. I think she's going to be topping up her medal tally today. I think that's. into her walk leg yield. Just using the whip there instead of her leg, pushing the horse sideways. Some nice steps and back into trot. This is looking like a really, really good test. I think this is going to get a super mark. If that was meant to be a 20 meter circle, it was a little bit on the large side there. The whole picture just looks really, really steady and so, so fluent. And it's really a pleasure to watch. I think they are 20 meter circles. Just a little bit large. Very straight down the center line.
in grade two, they aren't allowed to canter in these tests, whereas obviously in the grade three, they are able to, although canter doesn't feature in the team or individual tests. So this is looking really, really super here from Nicole. I think she must be incredibly pleased with the progress that she's made with this horse over this recent year. It's looking spectacular. So, Nicole Big Dendal. Pats. Well, Sorry, Rupert. Yeah, well, Nicole Dendal has completed. That looked very good. So, uh, that no doubt will, it will go into the lead, but it's uh, uh, how good a performance is it? And I think that's going to be a, a mid 70% test. Pat on the bum for Wallace there. Just a lovely quote I've just seen on the uh, FEI Twitter feed from Tobias Jorgensen, who uh, uh, was competing in the Grade 3, uh, picked up a bronze medalist, and his quote is, becoming a family tradition. I've always been at the side watching my mum. I think she will be so proud. She will be incredibly proud. She's actually been on the Danish team for Paradisage before, um, and so to see her son go out and win his first medal at 17 years old. She's going to be incredibly proud well, of Tobias. He's had two medals, because of course he got team silver as well. Yes. Um, so he can be mighty proud, just 17 years of age, and uh, good luck for the future Tobias. But as we watch Nicole put in a pretty good test here, that's certainly going to give Stina Kastrup something to think about, because she looks to be her main rival in this six rider competition. No Pepe Puc here. Uh, we're just uh, trying to establish reasons for, uh, why that may be the case. So, uh, But there is a look at the highlights there, and there is Nicole on her horse. Uh, Wallace, this 14-year-old. And you can see there the, the strapping that she has to help secure her on the saddle. Um, and good performance it was yeah i think she should be really really pleased with that test i think she's got to be looking at mid to, to high 70s with that it was so fluid and so harmonious i think i would have given that a good eight for harmony mistake free really well, super test she knows it was her reaction is she's got a big smile on her face and uh, giving her horse a well-deserved pat for his efforts this morning. And usually plenty of orange around to help. Absolutely. You can see there, just being unstrapped from her stirrup, they uh, they have strapping to the girth and strapping her horse, her leg into the stirrup. And then again onto the saddle there too. Bit of sparkle there around her collar as well, and some pretty pearls in her hair. Waiting patiently for the score for her, <laughs> or not so patiently. <laughs> Such an attractive horse, Wallace. Job done. Yeah. I've done my work. Absolutely. Every Slobbering week. on his groom. Yeah. Come on, scores. We want yeah. to know. No. You can see these riders can't dismount on their own. Nicole needs to be carried into her wheelchair. Here we go. You said around about that mark, uh, didn't you? Sort of high 76.720. Fantastic. Isn't that the best mark so far? It what is. is. It? An 85 there. Artistically 80. from the judge at B. Uh, 82 overall. I think that's our first 80 of the day from one of the judges. That was a B. That was Bo Arman who was giving the 82. And, uh, well... That is going to take some beating, but a really good effort from Nicole. And now it's going to be a French rider coming into the arena, Celine Garnier. 
Wasn't such a good day for the French in the team competition yesterday. But the 35-year-old, another one who suffered a horse riding accident this time back in 2001, finished sixth in the freestyle in Rio uh, last year. And is riding a relatively young horse by uh, para dressage standards, just an eight year old of Bay Entire. Our first stallion of the day. Now, I think this could be a medal contender for the bronze, obviously, with Pepo out. I think we're, we're looking at Alina from Germany, who's going last. And Jana from Finland. It's going to be a tough fight, I think, between the three of them for the bronze medal. A great opportunity that, for them, but very sad that Pepo isn't in contention. I can confirm that Pepo failed the second trot up so that is why he isn't competing in this class today which is a great shame for him he'll be and, incredibly disappointed and you were talking about this is new the, the, the extra trot up and there is a, a vindication for the new because horse welfare is the uh, a paramount concern to all and sundry as Celine Gani begins her display another one uh, injured as a, by a riding accident as I say a big smile from her as she starts her test. A lovely entrance. And she also broke her left leg in the uh, from a fall in the build-up to the 2012 Paris Games, obviously in London. But she has been competing again since 2014, and that accounts presumably for the uh, extra brace cover on her left leg that she's using here. Yeah, I would imagine that would. That looks like some pretty sturdy strapping there. And she's been on the unlucky side. Not only she's fractured her femur, tibia, and fibula in another fall oh, wow. during qualification for the World Championships back in 2007. She still returned to the saddle um, in September of that year, having the accident happening out in April. That's I guts, think, isn't it? I think we might describe her as a tough cookie. She is definitely <laughs> a tough cookie. That takes some determination, doesn't it, to come back from those horrendous falls. So showing some good quality walk steps there. Well, every rider suffers falls. I mean, I'm presumably you've had the odd... Growing Moment. up, my, my yes, absolutely. Growing up, my mum always told me you have to fall off seven times and get back on eight to become a good rider. So I used to count it down, but I've lost count now. There's been so many. <laughs> well, I fell off once and never got back on again. Much to my mother's chagrin, she wasn't happy. <laughs> Rupert, we need to get you back on. No, 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 no. no. The rest of my family do, but uh... great music here. I'm enjoying this. Quite so familiar with this. Got well, enough of your friends watching it. Probably tell me what it is. Alan Walker faded. How did you find that out so quickly? Uh, my little friend Google. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Everyone's best friend. This is looking like a really yeah. nice test here from Celine. I think she could be in with a chance with a medal today a big smile on yeah, her face she's she? you can see how much she's enjoying this you really can she's loving every second of being in that arena and so she should she's getting a, a good tune out of her horse it's staying nice and fluent 
The quality is not quite the same as what we had with Nicole, but she's doing a great job here. It's in a lovely frame. Some walk leg yields there. One of their compulsory movements. Marks of music interpretation today. Smile still on her face. Oh, she looks incredibly pleased with that. You can see. She's got some uh, crystals around the horse's plait there for extra sparkle. Wow. There's Tia Bolt, her teammate from the grade ones. And the highlights from Celine's test now. It just looks like a really harmonious partnership. She's Got him really uphill and uh, and looking really really smart. Some good quality walk there. It's very fluent, mistake free from what I can tell. I think she could be in for a really good percentage now. And her leg yield there, back to the track. So waiting on the score for Celine. Really pleased with that test she looked. She clearly enjoyed that. And and well she might be. And a beautifully turned out horse as well. And analyzing that performance. Will it be clearly will it be enough to get her a medal of some description? And that's gonna be the uh, big question. I think she must have a chance from that. And it would be fabulous if she was able to from her perspective, but have the French medaled yet? I'm just trying to think. I don't think they have so far. I don't think they have. I hope so. They'll be looking to uh, get a medal here, and maybe they have a chance here, with obviously with no Pepe. So that's slightly opened up the door for one of the others to get a medal as um, we wait on the score. I think she'll be hoping for something around the 70% mark. A lot going on here at the European Championships today, including the start of the jumping competition, which is, of course, live on FEI TV as well. And the dressage is into day two, where you can hear Jessica Curtin keeping Phil Gazala under control. That is into the first day of competition in the main Ulleve Arena. And it will be the second day of the team dressage competition later today as well, as Celine is helped off her horse and into her wheelchair. But the horse standing there is good as gold. And uh, so I love these horses. They've got the most benign temperament and just... And for a stallion as well, yeah. you know, it's just unbelievable how He's just well sort of like there's a sort of chilling back in the sun, just sort of taking it as the score comes in. So she does go into the current silver medal position with 69.8. I was close with the 70%, wasn't I? Well, Only one wrong prediction yeah. today so far. Well, <laughs> you can't find a horse. There could always be a job for you as a judge. <laughs> I, I think I prefer commentating, actually, right, okay. to, to well, being a judge. You probably get 
because, Judge, you're always going to get someone coming. Why did you give me Absolutely. this Absolutely. I'm probably going to get that anyway. Uh, uh, for, I've already I mean, had Sophie Wells telling me off for calling her grandma. So. Uh, right, right. Okay, well, well, if that's the only thing you've been told, <laughs> on, well, then you've done all right. Um, but there's confirmation of the leaderboard halfway through this great two with Nicole Denduk hoping to add to the Dutch medal tally this week. But could a Finnish rider get on the uh, medal sheet? And coming in from Finland is Jana Kiv Kivimaki. Jana's produced some really lovely tests over the last couple of days, so I think she's one to watch out for as well here in the freestyle. 43-year-old who has uh, well, suffered a really horrendous in injury when a loading platform of a horse transporter fell on her and uh, crushing two vertebrae and severing her spinal cord, and that's resulted her in being paralyzed. Ouch. And uh, before her injury, she was an able-bodied a question and competed at Finnish national level. So uh, another who has maintained her passion for the horse, and that is such a regular story, and it reflects well, just what horses mean to people. Once you get into the sport, they get under your skin. And they you just certainly can't. do. Whoops, just a little spook there has been walked around. Yeah, I think, again, That's it's, that corner it's there. the corner playing havoc isn't well, it well it's probably a good thing too to get the horse used to it that's you know just sensible knowing there's a bit of often has been a bit of a problem for whatever reason i mean there is crowds here and we are in the heart of the city but there does seem to just always be a little bit of a a, a quirk in that corner for some reason that the yeah. horse is just a little on edge which is giving yana a little bit of uh, trouble before the start of the test Hopefully this uh, doesn't continue when she goes down that centre line. Got the uh, a assistant on hand just to uh, make sure there are no early problems. But now just, again, just keeping the horse calm. He's going for a, another walk around the arena. The bell has gone, so she's going to have to get into position and then have her trainer raise her hand to start the music. Whoa. You can just see the horse is a little twitchy. Yeah, absolutely. This is the first time you've really seen that this week, isn't it? The horse just not, for what reason, just... And this is where you have to give real credit to the uh, skill of the individual rider you know under difficult circumstances she's, she's still smiling she's still smiling <laughs> you can see letting her <laughs> she knows this is going to be hope the horse is going to be good for her and this 11 year old mare called Belleline she enters the arena and the horse now is prick coming down so, good luck to Iana Kivimaki and her horse as they begin. With some dramatic Very music. dramatic music, yeah. What, what a way to make an entrance. Yeah. Some leg yield in trot. The first we've seen today, a little kick out there. Just feeling some tension in that corner. Cutting the corner there, a good idea. I'm not sure if she was meant to, but yeah, 20 meter circle. Very dramatic music. Sounds like Game of Thrones, I think. You've got me there. I wouldn't be surprised if someone didn't come up with Game of Thrones. Are you a Game of Thrones fan? Uh, yeah. I have, I have, I'm not up to date with it, let's just say. It's passed me by. I haven't got my finger on the cultural Game of Thrones pulse. But we're not sure whether this is from the Game of Thrones, but if it is, 
let Natasha know. Eight meter circle there. Just tension creeping in every so often, which is uh, spoiling the overall picture because it is a nice one and she. Well, we knew the horse was probably not quite as relaxed as she would have wanted yeah. beforehand. So there's always this is probably it's proving quite a test in that respect. Some good steps of leg yield there. Some really good crossing over of the legs. Sounds quite haunting, doesn't it? This music. Well, if it is Game of Thrones, there's a lot goes on in the in the program. Absolutely. A lot going on in this program as well. She's got a great floor plan here, showing off what her and her horse can do. I think if you're an actor on the Game of Thrones, you just check whether you've been killed off at the bottom of the script and see. Well, I've still got the contract. I've, I've survived another episode. This is incredibly dramatic. Yep. Another trot leg yield here. Again, not required, but uh, will hopefully increase her chances of a good percentage. It's a sort of thing that probably set in Finland, filmed in Finland anyway. I know they film it in Northern Ireland, but I can imagine there's some dramatic Finnish countryside that would be ideal for Game of Thrones for when they're showing the winter scenes or something. Absolutely. Some good walk steps there, keeping the rhythm nicely in the walk. Just losing the outside shoulder a little bit there. Walk leg yields. Not quite so good that way. You can, what you can see is the physical strain that, yeah. how hard that Yana is working to keep the horse doing what she wants. She absolutely is. You know, it, you can see her bracing against the movement of the horse. They can be quite bouncy. So you have to have good core strength and some of these riders don't have a core because of their paralysis. And that all adds to the, well, when you appreciate the skill level, I mean, when, if you haven't got a core, I mean, how then do you get the, you've got to generate it from some other means. Absolutely. And that's why a lot of the riders in this grade do have strapping. As you can see from her as well, she's strapped into the saddle. Is that going to overtake Celine? I think it'll be tight between the two. They both had a few moments where it wasn't quite fluent enough, and uh, I think it's going to be a, a close one percentage wise. See there, the leg yield steps in the walk. This is an example of how hard she's having to work, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. She looks exhausted now. Well, she also had the difficult moments at the beginning when the horse was yeah. in a slightly fractious state of mind. Yeah, and that's going to play on her mind throughout the test. She's going to make sure that the horse doesn't have the same reaction as it did outside the arena. So the judge is deliberating. 
There's Bo there at B from Sweden. Still to come, we've got Stinner Kastrup. She'll be next in on horse Bo Smarties. There, there is she is. Stinner. What a surprise. She's got a smile on her face. Gorgeous smile. She's such a happy girl. And then you, and then you, you see how talented she is. And what yeah, Stinner's basically a, a torso. And uh, we were just saying then about the strapping that some of the other riders have. She has no strapping at all. There's nothing holding her down in that saddle, which is extraordinary. And then what is also more extraordinary is how she gets the horse to do everything she wants. Yeah. And talking to her on Tuesdays, you were, I mean, how... Um, frustrated she was that she made a couple of mistakes that she felt cost her gold on on Monday. Yeah, she she didn't have the best ride on Monday. I mean, she still won a bronze medal. You know, she she did very very well. But yesterday was a much better test from Stinner and Smarties. Um, she set the tone for the day because she was she first did. in 74, 74 and yeah. then that really put the Denmark Denmark team in a really good position. We haven't got the score as yet for Jana, so but we are off and running now with Stinner's test. And I imagine the music might be quite dramatic. I think it's going to be quite fun. If it's uh, reflecting her personality, we'll see. Of course, she has to have two whips, obviously, to give her the means to get the horse to do what she wants yeah i mean to do a leg yield with no leg at all look at that crossing yeah. she does such a fantastic job and you can see her moving her body weight there to the inside to push him out to the outside and using her whip to just bring him over trip behind there Lovely medium trot there from Stinner. Great music, really. Follows the beat of the horse. You can see his hind legs moving to that beat. A three loop serpentine here. looking really super from Stinner. I think she's going to be challenging Nicole's 76%. It's smooth, isn't it? It, it is. I mean, taking the music aside, just looking at what she's doing, it feels... Yeah, very fluent. Lovely transition in the music and her own transition from trot to walk there. And a leg yield quarters trailing a little bit but compared to the first day where she really struggled to get the horse into a leg yield this is so much better and again it improves towards the end of that leg yield there the horse going to the toilet without disturbing the walk which is good being ridden really beautifully from Stena. She's doing a fantastic job and some trot leg yield there. Incredible to see from a rider with no legs at all. She does such a fantastic job. A real figurehead for Parasport. Sometimes you're in awe. Yeah. If anybody needs an inspirational figurehead, just look at this. I 
Yeah, some of these things are quite hard to do if you've got everything. Yeah. Really beautiful test. I think this might just have gold medal on it. I think it might be. Well, that's a shame there. Yeah, just, just dropped off her leg there. A real shame. Probably. The first stumble. Yeah. Medium trot towards the judges. And a final salute. And look at that smile. Job done. And Danish flag's being waved. And Stinner. The just 23 years of age she is of course an individual and freestyle bronze medalist in Rio and uh, is there an odd number of plats there on the on the horse well that's one of her superstitions <laughs> so uh, I'm sure there will be and a bit of gold glitter too yeah, yeah. I think she said she did that in a national oh this is going back just to 69.906 that was Jana Cliff Kimmy Markey scored as we didn't see before, but now we know it's 69.906. That's put her into silver medal well, position, but I don't think for long. On my other computer, it says 907. So, uh, uh, I think uh, that might be down to bronze soon, though, because that's going to be yeah. a huge percentage, I think, from Stinner there. Stinner. Well, the, the, the Danish team definitely win the uh, speedy wheelchair competition. Because <laughs> um, Stinner can uh, definitely get around quickly. She can. It's just such a beautiful picture that yeah. these two create. And I, I'm just, yeah, I know, so in well, awe we of all are. her. And it would be a deserving gold medal, but uh, Nicole Dendel did very well in her own right. But Stinner. I like Stinner's music as well. Yeah, I thought it, it, it was of, very fitting. Yeah, it wasn't, and I say something we necessarily know, but it was just it worked. Yeah. It had the had the change of pace, and it was and the horse. It was simple in the sense the horse you knew you could hear the drum beat, you knew the horse seemed to be in time, very easy to to get the yeah. get get the picture. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's what the judges want. They don't want something that's hard to follow and her floor plan was the same. It was nice and fluent. So one more competitor to come in the grade two. And that is going to be Alina Rosenberg from Germany. And will it will she be able to uh, put in a significant performance but we think it's really between Nicole and Stinner so this moment could be the decisive one in terms of this particular competition As Sarah Leach there the British judge at E Still an absolutely lovely day, the sun-drenched crowd. And they've had a very good summer here, I'm told. Yeah, well, if this is anything to go by, there's what, not what a, a cloud in the sky. It's what a perfect beautiful. week to have a wonderful week of weather in Sweden. The most beautiful city, this, and the most beautiful country around here as well. So I still can hear working. some cheering there. Well, I wonder if they've had the score quicker than we here have. Here we go. Score time. I think she may have. 77. 
Well, 77.06. It's about four, uh, three percentage points more. Uh, uh, not, not three percentage points. Three percentage points more. Point three. Yeah, point three. Yeah. All about the point. So uh, that is uh, 77 point. What was it? Six zero. Yeah, zero six zero. So but again, that, a provisional score. There we go. That's the leaderboard with. Stina Kastrup, 77.06. Then it's uh, Nicole Dendog in the silver medal position with 76.72. And current bronze medal is heading to Finland with Jana Kivimaki with that 69.906. But the final rider, well, Alina Rosenberg finished behind Jana in the grade two individual. Uh, 69.5 was Jana's score, 68.47. So it is going to be a straight shootout, really, between Jana and Alina, we think, yeah, for the bronze I think medal. So. With the Denmark medal tally adding already. They've got a bronze already this morning with Tobias Jorgensen. Now we've got, it appears, a gold medal heading to Denmark. Their first of the week, they've been knocking on the door uh, of getting a gold and it looks as if they may be getting one but the final rider coming in to the arena is alina rosenberg for germany and she is a 25 year old with cerebral palsy as a result of being born premature so this is fairly familiar music to yeah. even though I can't remember what it is, but I've heard it many times. I can't yeah. either, but no, I'm with you on that one. It has been used a few times in the past. So fighting for a, a bronze medal here in the Great Two Freestyle Championship. She is a world ranked 15th rider. That's Looking good so far. And those world rankings are across all disciplines, all categories. All grades, all yes. Grades. She looks like she's a little bit ahead of her music. I think that crescendo is meant to come a little bit earlier. So she'll have to put in a circle or make some extra time in there. This seems to be quite common today, but on the whole, this is looking really nice. It's only an eight-year-old horse, so plenty of scope for the future, which is lovely to see. A good 20-meter circle there. This is going to be incredibly tight between Alina and Jana from earlier on. She's producing some really lovely work here. And I think it could be good enough for a bronze. A lovely walk there. horse does have a super over track in the walk I think any grade ones would be envious of this
This test is really flowing. I think she's doing a fantastic job with her floor plan. I think she just got better. Yeah. She sort of improved as she settled into it. And Absolutely. Bronze medal? I think it could be. Very straight on the centre line there. And a good leg yield in the walk. Look at the concentration levels required. Unfortunately, yeah, just not so good that no, way. No, no, didn't quite work. It's all of that's. And that is a, a compulsory movement, unfortunately, so that would have cost her quite dearly. She might have time to put another one in. We'll see. No, she's trotting now. That's her friendly horse there in the corner. Very powerful music. I think Carl had this I know, music. he did. This is... Yeah. That's why... The Carl we're referring to is Carl Hester yes. there. From the able-bodied dressage British team. I think that was the added circle that she needed there to make up for time. Well, and her final salute there. Letting out, exhaling with re relief that it's over, but will it be a medal winning effort from Alina? And uh, this will be the uh, anxious moments, but uh, we think on the evidence so far that the gold medal will be heading to Denmark and the uh, Stina Kastrup will be the likely recipient, well, will be the recipient, but looking at this with this dramatic music I think it stands a really good chance of a medal it was pretty mistake free it was only really that last leg yield to the left that had uh, had some issues she did like a, a zigzag the first leg yield was pretty good and then as soon as she changed the bend to leg yield in the opposite direction that's when it uh, it just went a little bit wrong unfortunately the horse wasn't naughty, you can see here. A good leg yield there. And then she changes the bend, shortens her rein, pushes the horse the other way. And it just isn't really parallel at all and isn't really showing a true leg yield. But the rest of the test was really lovely. So hopefully she's done enough to pick up the marks and some really beautiful walk music there. And, a, and smile. a big smile. Big smile from Alina Rosenberg. And the judges now going through their final thoughts on that test. Still to come, we've got the grade one to follow in around about 20 minutes time. And will it be a third gold medal for the star of the show this week? And that's uh, been the uh, British rider, Julie Payne, who has... Uh, delivered amazing performances uh, and yesterday particularly in the team performance when she said she didn't feel particularly well but and somehow managed to produce a even better test than the one she had on Monday so she will be um, out to uh, make it a hat-trick of gold medals in her European Championship debut that's coming up starting at 11.50 for the uh, grade one competition and waiting on the result then to confirm uh, Julie Payne for instance will be going at 12.20 in just under an hour's time we start 11.50 and uh, eight competitors will be going in that so Waiting to see where Alina ends up. Will it be a bronze medal? Winning score at the moment is 77.06. Nicole Dendulk has had a good week herself. Just some good performances. I'm very close between Nicole and Stinner with point three. Nicole's picked up two medals so far. Team 
bronze and silver. Here comes the result, and she has got the bronze. Alina Rosenberg is our bronze medalist here with 71.413. She'll so, be very happy with that. I think, is it the first German medal um, of this championships? I think it could be. Uh, rattling through them, yes. Yeah, I think, I think it so. is. I think it is. So, first medal for Germany, and it is a first gold medal for Denmark, and I have to say, thoroughly deserved with thoroughly the way, deserved. They, way they have performed this week. And Stina Kastrup is that gold medalist, 77.06. Nicole Dendulk in silver, 76.72. And Alina Rosenberg just a few moments ago, securing bronze with 71.413. And just uh, outpointing Jana Kivimaki, who finishes fourth. So there we have two down, three to go. And this final day of para equestrian dressage in the freestyle. The next one is grade one, starting in around 20 minutes. So for the time being, from me, Rupert Bell, and my co-commentator here Natasha Baker <coughs> we'll take a short break cup of coffee time but we'll be back in time for the next competition which will begin with another Finnish rider it's Katja Kajalainen who will start the grade one competition at 11.50